uh, today we're presenting uh, task three of mathematics and um, I'd like to share with you um, the problem number one, which I choose is related to a train passing. <laughs> so you can see my presentation here, do you? Yes, yeah, my friend, good morning. All right, yes, I see your, your screen. Okay. So I'm going to read really quick because we only have 12 minutes uh, to do this. And uh, so the first problem says Susanna and Michael on their way out of class, watch a train passing by uh, and use a stopwatch to measure the time it takes uh, for the train to pass a reference, a reference point, a post, and to go through a 240 meter wall. The times used were 10 and 30 seconds respectively. Thinking about the relationship between space, time, and speed, they decided to calculate the length of the train and its speed. Explain to them, how would you do it? Okay, to solve this problem using the Polya four-step method, we follow the structure of understanding the problem, devising a plan, carrying out a plan, and looking back. So the first step is understand the problem. And it says, it goes like this. Susanna and Michael observe a train and measure two time intervals. It takes 10 seconds for the train to pass a reference point, like a post. And it takes 30 seconds for the train to com uh, completely pass a 240 meter wall. We are asked to find the length of the train and the speed of the train. So. Uh, relevant relationship include the formula for speed. Speed equals distance over time. So we need to use the time intervals to calculate both the train length and its and and its speed. So the step two is devise a plan. To solve this, we can't set. I'm sorry, man. Ah, okay, yeah. I thought I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I was, uh, I was muted. No, 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 I'm okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Step two, devise a plan. To solve this, we can set up two equations based on the two observations. When the, tra uh, when the train passes the reference point, point post, it covers a distance equal to its length, L, in 10 seconds. When the train passes 240 meter wall, it covers a distance equal to its length, L plus, the wall length, 240 meters in 30 seconds. From these two observations, we will write an equation for the train, uh, train to speed based on each situation. Use the two equations to solve the unknowns, the length of the train, L, and the speed of the train, V. So step three is carry out the plan. Let's define V is the speed of the train in meters per second, and L is the length of the train in meters. So the first equation, train passing the post. When the train passes the post, it travels a distance equal to its length, L, in 10 seconds. Therefore, we can express the speed as V equals L over 10, equation one. And the second equation is uh, train passing the wall. When the train passes 240 meter wall, it travels a total distance of L plus 240 meters in 30 seconds. Therefore, the speed can also be expressed as V equals L plus 240 over 30, equation two. Since both expressions represent the same speed, V, we can set the two equations equal to each other. L over 10 equals L plus 240 over 30. Now, solve L. Multiply both sides by 30 to eliminate the demo, uh, deno denominators. So 3L equals L plus 240. Subtract L from both sides. 2L equals 240. Divide by 2. L equals 120 meters. So the length of the train is 120 meters. Now we, found, uh, we find the speed of the train using the value of L in equation 1. V equals L over 10 and equals 120 over 10 and equals 12 meters per second. So the speed of the train is 12 meters per second. The step four, look back. We found that the length of the train is 120 meters. The speed of the train is uh, 12 meters per second. And to check its solution, uh, to check this solution, 
uh, is reasonable. We can verify plugging the values back into the second condition. The train should pass a 240 meter wall in 30 seconds. The distance to be covered is 120 plus 240, and that equals 360 meters. At a speed of uh, 12 meters per second, the speed to pass 360 meters is time equals distance over speed and equals to 360 over 12 and equals 30 seconds. This confirms that the solution is correct. So that's the exercise, David. All right. I really, I really enjoy your explanation. Thank you so much. That was uh, a kind of interesting because, you know, that kind of problems, you have to think a lot <laughs> and, you know, try to, to get the, the right answer. It's not easy. It's not easy. All right. Let's see my my problem and just a moment i'm going to share my my screen all right actually i can't share my screen could you help me with that please You have your microphone turned off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow, how do I do this, man? I I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe it would be a good idea. Like put on my name and something like a mate coordinator or or moderator, something like that. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. There you go. There you go. Now you can do it. All right. Let's see. All right. And now, can you see my screen? All right. Yeah, I can Thank see you. it. I can see it perfectly. All right. First of all, I'm going to read the problem, and then we are going to try to, you know, to get the, the answer for this one. All right. Juan and Luis go shopping and go up an escalator. Juan is three times faster than Luis. When climbing the stairs, in the end, Juan counted 75 states and reach only 50 states. So we want to know how many states the staircase has. So in according to this information, Juan is three times faster than Luis, right? Juan is this one, the first one, you know, and Luis on, is a little, you know, one only counted 50 states. So we need to find out the total number of states on the escalator. And here we have some, you know, some states to give to the, to the answer. But I'm going to be so on it. So I think that the best option like to be creative and to give the answer is to think about a basic, I'm so sorry, a basic method. And this is according to if the faster one gets 75, so, and the, I'm so sorry, man, can you help me with that? Could I to describe the, the other one? So one is the faster and the other is the slowest. The slowest. Thank you so much. I have forgotten this one. All right. So I think that the answer for this one for the result is 100 scalars. So that is according to this one that we have here. For example, so the speed of one, the speed of Luis, and the speed of the escalator. But Actually, we don't have the speed of the escalator, so we have to think about it. And if one is three times 
faster than Luis. So according to this information, right, we made a simple roll and we can find out how many states the staircase has. So according to the method of polia that we have to, to be studying in, in these stats, this is the, the answer. So this is a short exercise, but to get to the results, I have to, to think about a lot in this one because in this uh, in this problem, we don't have actually enough information. For example, will be a great idea to note um, to know the speed of the staircase, but we don't know that speed. We only know that how many states they got they got the guys counted. So this is a little this is a kind of difficult too. All right, I think that this is all. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your effort for being here. Okay, David, let's continue with the other uh, mates with their videos. Thank you so sure. much. Hello, everyone. Next, I will give the explanation on the student two, problem two, one page 21. Calculated the perimeter and the area of the shaded figure. Okay. One, um, area of the figure is formed by a sharp portions, which is the difference between the area of the square and two circular sectors. The area of the square is a square. Each circle sector appears to have the radius of a over two and a angle of a 90 degrees and quarter of the circle. The area of the circular sector is um, P area squared over four. Then the total area of the two sector is two times P um, open parenthesis A over two close parenthesis squared alt over four equals P A squared um, over eight. The shaded area will be perimeters. The shaded perimeter is the sum of the lengths of the arcs of the two circular sector. H are is of one over four on the circumference of the circles or radius uh, over two. Then the length of the an arc is one over four times two p times a over two equals a uh, PR over four, which took arcs. The total shared perimeter is shaded perimeters equals two four times PR, PR over four equals PR over two. Then shaded area uh, A squared open parenthesis one minus P over eight, close parenthesis, the shaded perimeters P A over two. Thank you. Hello, my name is Daniel Correa and today I'll be solving um, student three. Uh, problem one, page 22. Um, on this issue, on this mathematic problem, uh, my topic will be Gulliver's Travels. So um, uh, we have to keep into account that Gulliver is 12 times taller than a Lilliputian. This creates an interesting problem. 
the mattress size, to make a mattress size that fits Gulliver, we need to scale up the Lilliputian mattresses by its size. Volume or space? It scales by the cube of the height ratio. So 12 third equals 1,728. This means that 1,728 Lilliputian mattresses are needed to make one mattress for Gulliver. Now, when we when we talk about the uh, the house size for Gulliver, um, the, the 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 house for Gulliver, uh, we need to scale the area of a Lilliputian house. So the way we scale the area is um, um, uh, measuring the square feet of the size radio, radio, radio and we calculate 0 0.75 plus 12 cube, and that equals 108. So Gulliver's house needs 108 square meters of land. Uh, and this problem demonstrates how in geometry volume scales with the cube and area with the square of the size radio. Thank you very much. Um, hello, uh, my name is Rafael Beltran uh, and uh, I pick uh, the student number five, uh, problem one uh, from the page 26 for the develop of this task on uh, number three. Uh, the problem said uh, that a team of painters had to paint two walls, one uh, with a double surface area than the other one. And the whole crew was painting on the big wall for half a day. And in the afternoon, half of the team painted on the small wall and the other half on the large one. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, they only had a little left to paint uh, on the small wall in the second day for which a single painter is needed uh, to paint that part of the small wall. Uh, so the, the question is uh, how many people uh, made up the team? So there is a note also down here that say that uh, the working day is made up of, uh, of four hours before uh, noon and four hours in the afternoon. So the whole day would be like eight hours of duty. So all painters perform the same uh, work uh, evenly. Uh, to understand the problem, uh, the first point we have two walls, uh, one big and one small one, you know? So the large wall has twice the surface area of the small wall, so the double area. And the whole crew paints on the large wall for four hours in the morning. And uh, in the afternoon, uh, the other four hours, uh, the crew is divided in two. Half of them paint on the large wall and the other half on the small one. I mean, small, small wall. Um, at the end of the day, only a small portion of the small wall remains unpainted. And uh, a painter will, will need to work a full day, the eight hours to finish it at the second day, at the next day, I mean. So... The plan design that's, uh, let's call 2P for a big wall, a P for a small wall, and X for the painters uh, quantity. I mean, the, the amount of people that compose that, that, that crew of painters. And A for the area, we'll call A uh, the area that each painter paints uh, just in an hour. Uh, then we get the following work distribution in the morning that in the morning, uh, the first four hours, all the team works on the big wall. So in four hours, X painters paint an area of uh, four, multiply X, I mean the name of painters, and also multiply per A, that the, the area. So in the afternoon, the following four hours, the team split into two groups, half of the painters, uh, I mean, just if you see uh, here, uh, the X is the number of the painters divided into, into two. Uh, continue working on the big wall and the other half will go on the small wall. So the big wall area painted would be like uh, four multiply X. The X means the uh, number of painters and uh, divide it uh, into two, uh, multiply uh, per A, just uh, the area. 
that's equal uh, to uh, multiply x. Uh, I mean, x again is the number of painters, and uh, multiply per a the the area the area. So for the small wall area painted would be like it's the same the same equation from up here. Uh, both are are similar are uh, identical. I mean, so. Finally, at the deadline, uh, just a small part of the small wall remains to be painted, which requires one one painter to work the next day for the whole the whole day. I mean the the whole shift, the the eight hours. So therefore, eight a, I mean, is the remaining area to be painted. So after that, it is possible to raise an equation to find x. X is the number of painters. So. For developing the plan, uh, we all know that the small wall has uh, an area that uh, it's called for this exercise with the letter A. And by the end of the day, uh, the wall uh, has been almost painted totally. Uh, the big wall area painted uh, equals for X uh, multiplied per area plus uh, two X, I mean the number of painters, Multiply per area as equal 6x multiply a, and this wall has an area of 2p. 2p because it's the, the, the biggest oh, the biggest wall, the big one. Uh, then uh, 6x uh, multiply a as equals 2p. So it'd be like the amount of uh, people uh, per area working on the big wall. So for uh, there, here, here we go with the small wall, the small wall. Uh, area painting at the end of the day is equals to two x uh, multiply per a. So two uh, x number of the painters multiply per area. The next day, a painter finished the wall during the eight hour shift. So p is equals to x multiply a plus a a. Uh, let's solve the, the equation. So 6x multiply uh, per area is equal to p. So down here, uh, these two pass from here to here to divide 6 into 2. So p is equals uh, 3x multiplied per a. So replacing p as equal to, uh, uh, at this time, we'll know the, um, the um, the meaning of, uh, of P is equals uh, 3X multiplied per A. In the second equation, 3X multiplied per A as equals to X multiplied per area uh, plus um, 8A. So dividing both sizes in, into A, uh, 3X is equals uh, 2X uh, plus 8. So X, uh, the number of, um, of uh, painters is equals to 8. So I think the the painters crew uh, are um, eight people. So let's uh, do for a verification down here. So let's check the exercises using x equals eight. So the big wall um, has an area of two p. Uh, so equals c x multiply a equals forty eight a. So a small wall has an area of P as equals to X and multiply uh, per area as equals 24 A. In the morning, A painters work on the big wall painting an area of 32 A. So in the afternoon for painters paint 16 A on the big wall, so doing the whole area of 48 A. In the afternoon for painters paint 16 A uh, on the small wall, leaving 8 A behind for the next day. So the painter's team was eight people. Thank you.